some vertices in a graph are more important than others. One way of describing a vertex's importance is centrality. The simplest measure of a vertex's centrality is degree, the number of edges that are connected to a vertex. In a directed graph, we can separate degree into in-degree and out-degree, which measure exactly what you would think, the number of edges directed into and away from a vertex. Degree is quick and easy to calculate, but its value can be limited. The number of social network friends someone has doesn't necessarily tell you much about their importance in the overall network, their influence, etc. A more sophisticated measure of centrality is betweenness centrality. This is a measure of how many of the shortest paths through a graph flow through a particular vertex. More formally, it's the ratio of the number of shortest paths in the graph from all possible starting to all possible ending points that flow through vertex V to the number of all shortest paths through the graph. If you wanted to observe the largest number of messages flowing through a network, you'd start by monitoring the vertices with the highest values of betweenness centrality. The cost of computing betweenness centrality is dominated by the cost of calculating the shortest paths from all vertices to all other vertices. In a dense graph, the floyd warshall algorithm can find all such shortest paths in on the order of v cubed time. In a sparse graph, algorithms like Johnson's algorithm do something like running Dijkstra's algorithm v times. If the graph is unweighted, Brandis's algorithm can compute all shortest paths in just order v times e time. Degree and betweenness centrality are critical to social network analysis. The study of how people and groups interact with each other at a systemic, rather than individual, level. Social network analysis turns out to be important in areas you'd expect, like sociology, but also in areas you might not expect, like criminology. Traditional thinking about organized crime modeled criminal organizations as trees, always trying to get the people at the top. The problem is, if you remove someone at one rung of the ladder, there are always others ready to step up and fill the gap. Many law enforcement agencies are now turning to social network analysis to identify individuals that are very central in such networks, even if they aren't in charge. A highly central individual may be difficult to replace, causing disruption and lessening criminals' ability to organize. Social network analysis is also key in terrorism investigations, though the acceptable uses and limits of this analysis are key points of contention between governments and privacy advocates. Another family of centrality measures is eigenvector centrality. These measures attempt to model the influence of vertices within a graph. We won't get into the details of these algorithms, but in addition to social network analysis, they are important for assessing the importance of linked knowledge artifacts like scientific papers and even web pages. Google's PageRank algorithm is a modified version of eigenvector centrality. So that's a few ways to measure the importance of vertices within a graph. Degree, betweenness centrality, and eigenvector centrality, as well as how these measures are applied to social network analysis and influence modeling.